who do people say the Son of Man is? question tells us the context in which we must answer the second question. Who was Jesus to Peter? What did he expect of the Messiah? How did Peter respond when Jesus adjusted Peter's expectations? Peter saw Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and Jesus praises Peter's answer, saying, the answer was given to him by my Father in heaven. Matthew doesn't mention it in his gospel, but John's gospel tells us that Martha likewise professed. Yes, Lord, she replied, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Jesus asked the disciples who people said he was, and importantly, who they thought he was, because the answer to that question is the difference between living and a sort of living death. Jesus' beloved Apostle John makes the point when he says that our belief in this profession is the reason he, John, wrote his gospel. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, John wrote, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Of course, saying that Jesus is Messiah is one thing. Understanding what that means is quite another. Peter understood it to mean that Jesus would heroically free Israel from Roman bondage and become king himself. So we come to this week's reading. Here Jesus begins to make clear what it will mean for him to be Messiah. He said that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter, who prophetically professed Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one of God, now changes direction faster than a hairpin curve on a mountain road. Peter panicked and threw out the anchor. I see him puffing out his brawny fisherman's chest and stomping his sandal in the dust. Maybe he even wagged his finger. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turns to him and says, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Harsh words. But I don't judge Peter. When I became a Christian, I had a simplistic expectation that if I followed Jesus, God would pour blessings out on me, sort of like winning the lottery ticket with the scope beyond but including money. I and my loved ones wouldn't get sick. We would have successful careers. Our love lives would be like Hallmark movies, and our family lives would be straight out of an episode of the Waltons. The hard knocks of life have disabused me of those expectations. And the shifts have not always been easy or smooth. I've gone through periods when I was much further from God than I should have been because I couldn't handle the truth of how God was working. Like Peter, my inner stubborn spirit wanted God to do it my way. Now. Peter didn't quit and walk off. I'll give him that. Maybe he even thought he could change Jesus' mind. In fact, Peter hung in there with Jesus right up until it became clear that what Jesus had said would happen was actually happening. When Jesus had been betrayed by Judas, the high priest of God's people had declared him a blasphemer and the Sanhedrin had found Jesus worthy of death 
Peter was faced with what to him was a nightmare scenario. That is when Peter infamously breaks down and disowns Jesus three times. Yet, in Acts, we see Peter courageously and effectively serving as a champion for Christ. What happened that brought Peter back? Why didn't Jesus disown Peter? Why did Jesus reinstate Peter as an apostle? This is a gripping tale, but it is meant to be more than a good story. After the disciples told tales of who people thought Jesus was, Jesus turned to them and asked, Who do you say I am? After hearing of Martha's profession and Peter's profession and failure, we should let the Holy Spirit look into our hearts. Examining our hearts, we too should have an answer. Who is Jesus to me? How has Jesus not met my expectations? How have I responded when Jesus did not fit in the boxes I prepared for him to fit in? If I failed him, should I walk away? Is there any hope of restoration? Peter didn't walk away. Peter was not only restored, but became a mighty worker for the kingdom, not only winning thousands to life in Christ, but writing two of the 27 books of the New Testament. That had been Peter's calling, and he was restored to it. What will our restoration and reinstatement look like. Let's join in the prayer of King David, found in Psalm 51. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me.